Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends. Today in this lecture, we are going to uh, discuss some of the critiques of Rawls theory of justice. In the previous lecture, we have discussed uh, two principles of justice as argued by uh, John Rawls in a theory of justice. In today's lecture, we will start with uh, his uh, critique by C. B. Macpherson and then focus on uh, capability approach of uh, Amart Sen and his critique to John uh, Rawls theory of justice and also we will focus on libertarian and communitarian critique of uh, Rawls theory of justice. So, in the previous lecture, we have discussed the liberal egalitarian conception of justice through basically looking at uh, John Rawls a theory of justice and uh, this theory by John Rawls is regarded as the most comprehensive account of justice in modern times. So, in the words of Robert Nozick which we will discuss later, he uh, regarded though he provides a substantial critique to Rawls theory of justice, yet he acknowledged the significance of Rawls theory of justice by claiming that now everyone should work within the framework of justice provided by Rawls or explain why not. So, that is the comprehensiveness or the significance of uh, Rawls theory of justice. It has transformative impact on many policies, many uh, discussions and debates in political philosophy in modern times. So, his conception of justice re-establishes the value of justice as the first virtue of a society or public institutions. So, re-establishes the value of um, justice as the first virtue of society and public institution. It also sought to establish a balance between uh, two uh, political values of um, um, uh, liberty on the one hand and equality or what we also call social equity or social justice on the other, which is often seen by many philosophers as contradictory, as something which is incompatible with each other. So, you cannot have equality without compromising on liberty or freedom or you cannot have um, absolute freedom without compromising on the value of equality or social equity. So, Rawls uh, uh, while providing the most comprehensive account of justice also tries to balance between these two set of political values, political equality and uh, uh, liberty. However, as we will discuss today, there are many critique of this Rawls uh, liberal egalitarian theory of justice. Today, we will particularly focus on Amart Sen's critique of Rawls and his capability approach of justice and we will also discuss then libertarian and communitarian conception of justice. In the next lecture, we will discuss the feminist conception of justice and uh, global justice. So, in the final or concluding lecture on justice, we will take up these two subtopic within justice, where we will discuss feminist conception of justice and then uh, global justice. Now, to start with uh, Rawls critique, we will uh, start with C. B. Macpherson, who writes that in um, uh, Rawls theory, there is this assumption that uh, if we construct a theory 
and if uh, that uh, theory is just and context free that means uh, uh, the construction of a theory of justice must be um, context free uh, independent or autonomous from its context. So, uh, as I have discussed uh, in my previous lecture, his conceptualization of justice is based on a set of individual who are abstracted from their actual social positions in the society and they are put in a uh, veil of ignorance which he calls original position. Now, in that position through reflective equilibrium they arrive at a theory of justice which is context free that is not related or uh, uh, confined to only a particular context. So, in Rawls theory the argument for justice is that his theory has application across the context universally. Now, in this kind of uh, argument C. B. Macpherson argues that Rawls theory of justice and its claims of universalities according to C. B. Macpherson is very much culture specific. So, contrary to its claim of universality C. B. Macpherson argues that Rawls theory of justice is very much limited to a particular cultural context. According to uh, Macpherson, Rawls theory essentially rationalizes liberal beliefs and values. So, despite of his claim of will of ignorance or original position, uh, according to C. B. Macpherson, what Rawls theory essentially does is to rationalize a liberal set of values and beliefs. Now, uh, that means his theory is applicable only to a society which is a liberal society or a government which is a liberal government with welfare orientation and therefore, the claim of universality is something which is problematic according to C. B. Macpherson. So, he argues that it is a defense of a liberal democratic governments or societies with welfare orientation and therefore, it cannot be argued that it is something which is universally applicable. Now, uh, to move on if you look at the capability approach of Amarth Sen, which is a critique of Rawls theory of justice, but also an extension of uh, John Rawls theory. That means, some of the value that is put forward by uh, Rawls is acknowledged by Amarth Sen. However, he also argued the limits of that argument to include the not just what people are allocated in terms of redistribution or distribution of primary resources. Sen extending the argument of uh, Rawls argued that we also need to take into consideration the differential needs and requirements of different peoples depending upon their age, their sex, their gender or their genetic endowments and so on. So, people may require different kinds of uh, primary goods that is the one and more importantly what people uh, do with their uh, primary goods. So, their capability to uh, convert the primary goods is more uh, important for us to take into consideration while we are arguing or discussing about justice rather than limiting the argument merely to distribution or redistribution of primary sources. So, Amarth Sen's theory of justice is regarded as both a critique and also an extension of Rawls' theory of justice. It is also known as capability approach to justice where the focus is not merely on liberty or the freedom, but on the capability that means individual capacity to make choices whether that capability is enhanced or not what are the different capabilities of different individuals. Now, this interpersonal understanding of differential capabilities is necessary for ensuring overall justice or ensuring that everyone is capable or has the opportunity to live a life which they value. Now, to ensure that the focus or emphasis should not be merely on the primary sources or on uh, the idea of liberty 
but to see whether individuals are capable enough to use or convert the primary resources into skills or resources which enable them to lead a life which they value. So, this is called the capability approach to uh, justice. So, according to Sain, in Rawlsian framework, liberty is given more central a role. Now, this point we will discuss again when we will discuss Nozick understanding of libertarian conception of justice or libertarian critique of John Rawls egalitarian conception of justice. But a starting point for both of them was protecting or ensuring the maximum liberty to the individual. So, in Rawlsian framework, uh, liberty is given a central role. Although he moved from that uh, uh, position to justify difference, if that difference is for the benefit of the least uh, advantage. Now, this point which we call difference principle, we have discussed already in the previous lecture, but nonetheless even that difference is to ensure the liberty or to maximize the liberty of the individual. So, in Rawlsian framework, liberty is given more central role and in this framework, distribution of primary goods among every members of the society to achieve and exercise freedom. So, the idea of distribution of primary goods is to ensure that everyone is given a set of primary goods which will enable them to exercise their freedom or liberty. Now, uh, Rawls is trying to uh, uh, ensure that everyone should have access to certain uh, uh, primary goods which is necessary according to Rawls for him or her to enjoy his freedom and liberty. So, in this framework distribution of primary goods among every members of the society to achieve and exercise freedom of liberty are given more importance. However, Sain argue that this approach hardly deals with the question of capabilities and needs of each individuals in the society to use such primary goods to lead a life that they value. So, uh, first the needs of a sick or a healthy person is not the same. The needs of a child or an adult is not the same. So, uh, there are uh, differential needs depending upon the sex, age and status of the individual that we need to take into account. And more importantly, it is not just enough to distribute the primary goods, but also to take into account what individual does with those primary goods, whether they have the capability to convert these primary goods to lead a life that they value or not, whether that is happening or not that is the major concern for um, Amart Sen. So, for Sen, it is not enough to distribute same set of primary goods to each individual and then assume that justice is done and subsequent inequalities resulted out of this arrangement. That means, when you ensure the distribution of primary goods and if that leads to inequalities in outcome, that inequalities in outcome is justified and acceptable. Now, um, um, Sain argues that uh, this is not enough and it is also necessary to consider that people's capacity or capabilities to use or convert these primary goods into freedom or skill differ. Some may be brilliant, some may not be that brilliant, some may be healthy, some may not be healthy, some may be adult, some may be child, some may be um, old. Uh, so, these uh, uh, differential requirements and capabilities has uh, impact on the uh, capabilities of these members to use that primary goods for the uh, uh, liberty or the freedom or the kind of life that they like to enjoy. So, these differences might be result of individual age, sex or genetic endowments. Now, in the conception of justice to create a society which is just, we also need to take into account the uh, capabilities of individual to use these primary goods for the kind of life they wish to lead or they value. So, hence uh, Sain focuses on the capabilities. 
here capabilities mean individual freedom to choose between available alternatives and also their capabilities to convert the primary goods into the freedom or liberty or the life that they value living. So, uh, this capabilities in sense framework represent real freedom and uphold ju uh, justice. So, it is not merely the primary goods which is uh, uh, the sufficient condition for enjoying freedom or to leading a good life or worthy life. It is necessary, but more than that we need to strengthen the capabilities of individual to convert these primary goods into liberty or uh, use them to lead a life that they value. So, uh, thus capabilities in sense framework represent real freedom and uphold justice. Whereas, Rawls idea of redistribution of primary goods is only about means to the freedom. So, Rawls consider the distribution or redistribution of goods as means for realizing the freedom or true liberty. It hardly takes into account what individuals actually do with these primary goods. Sain on the other hand focuses precisely on this point as to how individual capacities or capabilities to use these primary goods differ and without taking into account these differences freedom or justice cannot be ensured. So, the capabilities or strengthening the capabilities is perhaps as significant as distribution or redistribution of primary goods. So, this in sense framework of justice distribution of primary goods is not enough. According to him focus should be given on strengthening the capabilities of individuals and fulfilling their different needs if justice is to be ensured. So, the focus is on the capabilities approach. Now, moving on to the next approach or critique of uh, Rawls theory of justice, we have libertarian approach to justice, where we will discuss mainly Robert Nozick's views on John Rawls theory of justice and his own entitlement theory of justice. So, arguing about the significance of Rawls theory of justice as I have discussed in the first slide. Nozick uh, wrote that everyone should now work within the framework of justice provided by Rawls or explain why not. So, that is how he acknowledged the significance or the comprehensiveness of Rawls theory in modern times. Although he provide a substantial critique to Rawls theory of justice which he considered liberal egalitarian theory of justice. His own theory of justice is regarded as the libertarian conception of justice. So, he does provide a critique to Rawls theory of justice, but he also acknowledge the significance of Rawls theory of justice, where he argues that everyone should now work within the framework of justice provided by Rawls or explain why not. So, however, he provides a uh, libertarian critique to Rawls uh, liberal egalitarian theory of justice where he differs from uh, Rawls idea of redistribution and consider it as the infringement on individual freedom and liberty. So, as we have discussed in some of the previous lectures that for the libertarian the value of liberty or freedom is absolute, it must not be compromised for some higher goods or some higher goals. So, liberty or freedom is considered as uh, self justified, it does not require further uh, justification. Uh, so, the following idea from uh, this um, absolute notion of liberty is the self ownership. So, individual as a rational self defining autonomous individual has uh, the rationality or has the right to own himself or to own property. So, therefore, the property right is then extension of this understanding of self ownership or self position which must not be taken away for some higher goods or some higher uh, higher goals. So, um, uh, the Rawls egalitarian conception of redistribution is in a sense uh, from the libertarian perspective an infringement of individual freedom and liberty. So, therefore, Nozick argued 
for a minimalist state. Minimalist state means the state which has limited rule. Now, here Nozick again criticizing Rawls, but do acknowledge the role of a state. So, unlike anarchist who questions the very legitimacy or very existence of a state and want to do away with any form of institution or a state, Nozick defends the existence of a state. However, unlike Rawls who want the state to take up the role of redistribution or welfare, uh, Nozick uh, consider a minimalist state. That means, it gives very minimum function to the state and leave the individual uh, with maximum freedom or maximum liberty which must not be compromised for some other social and political higher goals and ideals. So, uh, Nozick argued for a minimalist state and do not want a state to undertake any welfare or redistributive activities as envisaged by Rawls. So, the distribution of primary goods or redistribution of primary goods and to ensure that uh, wealth is not concentrated in the few hands, Rawls gives extensive role to the state. Now, in contrast to that, Nozick argued that a state should have a very minimum, minimum role and it should not indulge in any welfare or redistributive activities. Now, the state according to Nozick should be limited to the narrow function of protection against force, theft, fraud, enforcement of contract and so on. So, the minimum role of the state is to ensure, ensure in other words say what we call law and order. So, a state must ensure law and order. If there is some fraud, there is some theft, there is betrayal or uh, the party in contract betray the other uh, partner, then a state in that uh, situation must intervene and ensure the enforcement of contract and so on. So, the state has a very minimum role in the society that is limited to um, uh, protection against force, theft, fraud and enforcement of the contract and that is the uh, minimum role that uh, Nozick prescribed for the state. He also argued in his work, Anarchy, State and Utopia, that the principle of equality and this is the point which we have discussed that why Rawls is considered as the most comprehensive account of theory in modern times because he tries to balance between two incompatible set of political values that is political liberty or freedom on the one hand and equality on the other hand or social equity on the other hand. So, for Nozick the principle of equality is incompatible with the principle of liberty. Although Rawls and Nozick seems to have started from the same position, that is to say that they both value liberty. Now, this point if you take in remember or recall the Rawls two principle of justice. So, first principle is considered as the liberty principle that means, maximum liberty and freedom should be made available to everyone. Now, the second principle which has two part, part A talks about equality of opportunity to everyone and B talks about difference principle if that difference is for the least advantage, right? Re uh, most disadvantage uh, section in the society. So, uh, Rawls in a way also assume or uh, present the significance of liberty and as we have discussed in the uh, capability approach, liberty remains the priority for uh, Rawls. So, for, uh, distribution or redistribution of primary goods is to ensure that everyone should have the chance or opportunity to maximize his liberty or freedom. So, for Rawls as for Nozick, liberty is of some significant values. However, both Nozick and Rawls drifted from each other when it comes to realizing this liberty. So, Nozick considered it primary and main objective. So, for Nozick, liberty and freedom is the primary and the main objective. Whereas, Rawls 
although gave primacy to liberty as we have discussed in two principles of justice, he wanted to balance the ideal of liberty on the one hand and the quest for equality and social justice on the other. So, that is the common starting point and yet when it comes to realizing, Rawls take into account the critique to the libertarian ideals of freedom and liberty. So, Rawls although give primacy to liberty, he wanted to balance the ideal of liberty on the one hand and the quest for equality and social justice on the other hand. That makes Rawlsian conception of justice more egalitarian and more inclusive. So, Nozick's theory of justice defends. Now, we will uh, we have discussed the critique of Nozick to Rawls. His own conception of justice defends absolute property rights of the individual. Now, this absolute property rights of individual is an extension of the idea of self ownership or self defining individual having the capacity to uh, create wealth and own wealth and if that creation and ownership of wealth is just then a state or any other bodies have no right to take away those wealth in the name of some higher goods and higher ideals. So, Nozick's theory of justice defends absolute property rights of the individual. It is also regarded as entitlement theory of justice which means whatever arises from a just situation by just strip is itself just. So, anything which is owned and created or transferred, so property can be owned, created or owned through transfer. So, somebody who had rightful ownership of a property may transfer it justly to some other person. Now, that other person who acquire this property to transfer by just means their ownership is just and a state must not interfere in that legal or just transfer of property. So, this theory of entitlement theory of justice rests on these twin principles of just acquisition and just transfer. Just acquisition. So, if you acquire your, pro your property in a just manner without resorting to fraud or some kind of illegal activities, then your acquisition is just. Similarly, with just transfer. So, if uh, the ownership of property is through just transfer, that ownership is perfectly legitimate and a state must not interfere with those ownership. So, any property that has been acquired or transferred in a just manner must not be taken away by the state for any other higher goals or ideals, because the state has minimum role and it should not according to Nozick undertake the welfare or redistributive roles. So, however, uh, Nozick which he argues that the, his uh, argument of justice is historical, in fact uh, misses the very uh, history of ownership and transfer of property. It is never in the human history happened through just manner. So, the war, conflict and winning the territory through war and violence is the examples where the properties are owned and uh, transferred most of the time in a fraudulent or illegal or unjust manner and not through rightful means as Nozick would like us to believe. So, the human history is full of those uh, fraud, uh, war, uh, uh, ownership or transfer of property through war and violence and so on. In that context, although Nozick argued about this rectification principle that is, if property is owned and transferred through fraudulent means, through unjust means, then he argued that a state has a role to interfere and uh, redistribute that property. However, he gives more importance to the first two principle that is just acquisition or just transfer and give very little or uh, minimum focus on this principle of rectification which is the basis of Rawls in a sense uh, Rawls conception of redistribution of primary goods and so on. So, in Nozick what we find liberty and absolute property rights remain central to his conception of justice. Now, we will move on to the third and the final approach that we have to discuss today 
that is communitarian approach. And in this approach, we will primarily focus on uh, Michael Sandel and Michael Wolger. Now, the main focus of communitarian critique of Rawls theory of justice is the idea of individual. So, for Rawls and many other liberals, the individual is seen as self-defining, autonomous, rational subject which takes decision on its own. Whereas, communitarian believes that individual is the member of the society or the community. Now, that membership of a society and community determines the notion of good or just in the individual. It is not the individual capacity or rationality that determines what is good or just, but it is the society or the community which determines for the individual what is good and just. So, the conception that we have about good and just is socially determined and not the act of individual rationality. So, the main focus of communitarian critique of Rawls theory of justice is the idea of individuals abstracted from their real actual social positions and put in some hypothetical original position of what is also called veil of ignorance. And theory they choose become the foundation of universal idea of justice. So, in the Rawlsian framework, some individuals are put in a hypothetical position which he called veil of ignorance or original position. And these individuals are abstracted from their actual social positions. That means, they do not know their status in the society. And yet, they pick up through reflective equilibrium, a theory of justice, which would be the foundation of universal theory of justice. Now, communitarian uh, critique this kind of abstraction of individual. And uh, Michael Sandel and Michael Wolger are two prominent communitarian critique of Rawls theory of justice. So, they argue that such isolated or abstract individuals do not exist. In contrast to the liberal conception, communitarian conception of self is embedded self. Embedded self means the individual is already always embedded in the life of the community of which he or she is a member. So, one cannot think of through thought experiment the individual which is isolated and abstracted from the society. So, without the social life or the community life, individual will not have any sense of good or uh, justice. So, that means, individuals are part of a pre-existing social organization which enable them to make choices. In other words, the conception of good or just is not the result of individual rationality and determinations as liberals would argue. Rather, these are that means, the notion of good and justice are constructed and held together by the community of which individual is a member. So, contrary to the uh, liberals, they believe the idea of good and justice is the socially constructed and determined and not the result of individual rationality and autonomy. So, therefore, the notion of good or just differ from community to community. So, different community have different notion of good or different notion of justice. That cannot be determined beforehand or a priori. So, uh, uh, in communitarian conception of justice, we also find that they take into account the cultural or the community or context specificities or particularities when they, they, they argue for uh, justice or how to ensure justice in the society. So, they do not uh, argue for a kind of hypothetical, abstract or experimental notion of uh, justice, but they want to engage with the local particularities or community specificities and through them try to develop or construct a sense of justice or good. Now, to briefly look at Michael Sandel, in his uh, liberalism and limits of justice and democracy's discontent, he questions the ideas of self and state neutrality. 
So, the self we have discussed as communitarian have argued that self is always embedded self and not um, uh, really the abstract isolated autonomous rational self as liberals would like us to believe. Now, the other point which we need to focus is the idea of state neutrality. So, all the state um, liberals would argue that a state must maintain neutrality that means, it must not take side when there are difference of opinion, there are different groups, state must maintain neutrality. Now, the communitarians like Michael Sandel questions this liberal uh, position on state neutrality and he argues that on many social and political issues, a state cannot remain neutral. For example, on the question of abortion and emanating moral and religious controversies, a state cannot remain merely a neutral spectator, a state must take side to ensure that justice is done. Now, um, Sandel also argues that a state neutrality if it maintains may have costly consequences. What can be such uh, consequences? That many groups which may be detrimental to democracies or liberal democracy can take advantage of this state neutrality. So, this uh, idea of state neutrality may be used to protect the groups like say new Nazis or the racists or the fundamentalist that may have a detrimental effect on the democratic possibilities of those individuals especially who are members of historically subordinated groups. So, the democracy has a positive impacts in a sense it includes those who were excluded from the participation or uh, from the governance or from the administration. So, it has ever inclusive tendency, but if that democracy maintains neutrality, then it is also possible that such neutrality may be used by the fundamentalist or the racist or the new nazist forces to uh, radically mar the possibilities of those groups or individuals who are part of historically subordinated groups. It prevents the communities to democratically realize their conception of goods. So, therefore, uh, Michael Sandel argues that a state must also take side to ensure that justice is done or democracy is strengthened and belief or faith in democracy is kept alive, especially for those who are from the subordinated groups or disadvantaged uh, groups. So, uh, contrary to the liberal argument of state neutrality, Michael Sandel argues for state intervention to ensure justice in the society. Now, we will discuss briefly Michael Walger and then we will conclude today's lecture. So, uh, Michael Walger's critique of liberal conception of justice is much beyond its conception of self or state neutrality. As in Michael Sandel, we have seen the communitarian critique of Rawls theory of justice is primarily based around the liberal conception of self on the one hand and state neutrality on the other. Now, in Michael Walger, we will find that he moves beyond this conception of self or state neutrality and rejects the universalist aspirations of liberals who seek to construct a theory of justice that would be applicable to all cultures universally. So, Michael Walger criticized the universalist aspirations in liberal conception of justice who want to construct a theory of justice which will be universally applicable across the culture, across the context. Michael Walger's own conception of justice is a pluralist uh, conception of justice. So, giving pluralist account of justice. Walger argues that justice is a human construct and not a kind of hypothetical thought experiment or abstract ideals. It has to be constructed among the actual real individuals, groups and societies and groups and societies may have uh, different conception of goods or justice. Now, that vary from community to community and culture to culture which we must take into account when we uh, construct a theory of justice. So, unlike liberals 
who believes in a theory of justice which will have universal application, Michael Walzer talks about the pluralist conception of justice where different communities, different cultures may have their own conception of good and justice and yet justice can be ensured. So, Walzer argues that justice is a human construct and if we consider the history, culture and membership of different societies they might have different conception of social good or justice and thus the conception of social good or justice will vary from community to community or culture to culture. So, the notion of good in a liberal society will vary from notion of good in a caste ridden hierarchical society or uh, in a society which is deeply religious or theocratic society. So, all these three kinds of societies may have different conception of good, different conception of justice. So, again the communitarian are very uh, sensitive to the culture and its specificities or particularities when they develop their theory of justice. Now, uh, Michael Walger own conception of distributive justice is based on the premise of complex equality. This we have discussed when we have discussed the idea of equality. Uh, again, uh, this idea of complex equality is um, explained in his book Spheres of Justice. And by complex equality, he means that no citizens standing in one sphere or with regard to one social good can be undercut by his standing in some other sphere with regard to some other goods. So, uh, the idea of complex equality is a bit different from the simple equality. Here, Michael Walzer argues that there are possibilities that one individual may have a superior or dominant position in one sphere of life. But complex equality must ensure that such domination or such superiority in one sphere of life must not automatically extend in other sphere of life or in other walk of life. For example, one person may have uh, superiority or dominant position in the political sphere, but that domination or superiority in political sphere must not extend in say sphere of society or in the sphere of uh, economy or in the sphere of culture. So, these all sphere must be independent and autonomous from uh, each other where individual may have the chances uh, of uh, having a better position in one sphere, but that must not automatically extend in other sphere of life and that is the irony of our modern, uh, modern society. So, for example, if you have enough money you can have access to better health care, better education, better opportunity and so on. Those do not have the money, they may not have as uh, better opportunities in education, in employment or in health and so on. So, Michael Walzer um, argues against that kind of extension of uh, a position from one sphere of life to the another sphere of life. So, the complex equality in a way uh, check the domination or superiority of one person in all sphere of life. So, it requires different distributive spheres be autonomous from each other and superiority in one sphere must not result in the superiority in other spheres. So, only then domination can be checked and proper equality and justice for everyone can be ensured. So, everyone should have opportunity or access to have better position in different sphere of life and so not be concentrated or limited to only a few section or few individuals in the society. So, this is all on the communitarian philosophy. Uh, here we are not making a difference between libertarian and the communitarian. We have tried to understand their conception of justice vis a vis Rawlsian conception of justice. However, many communitarians do assume some of the tenets of liberal uh, philosophy of thought, but that is not the subject matter for our discussion. So, in today's class we have discussed um, capability approach, 
of Amartya Sen and his critique to Rawls theory of justice and then we have discussed Robert Nozick and libertarian approach to justice and finally, we have discussed communitarian uh, critique of justice or conception of justice through Michael Sandin and Michael Wolger. In the next class, we will discuss feminist conception of justice and global justice. So, uh, for uh, the discussion that we have had today, you can uh, follow some of these books like uh, Raji Bhargav and Asoka Charya, Political Theory and Introduction and Hoffman Introduction to Political Theory, McKinnon you can also look issues in political theory, Colin Farrelly you can uh, read some of the original excerpts from some of these thinkers we have discussed like uh, Michael Wolger or um, Robert Nozick and so on. You can also look at Norman Berry and introduction to modern political theory and of course, John Rawls a theory of justice. So, that is all for today. Thanks for listening. Thank you all.